So I wanted to make a quick video just going on about why I quit dropshipping after making a few 40k months and what are the downfalls that I see with dropshipping. Instead of doing dropshipping, what I decided to do was I decided to start my own marketing company and it's been going pretty well. So all of that said, uh, let's get into it. So the first reason why I quit dropshipping was basically that it's not a sustainable business model in the long run. And I kind of want you not to get me wrong in this. Dropshipping in terms of taking a product for a marked down price and then selling it for a marked up price, I don't think that's going away anytime soon. But the sense of uh, taking a product that's gonna take you probably a month or two months to get to your customer very poorly made is probably what's going to be the thing that's going to die out uh, the shipping times takes too long all of my products were taking around 30 to 40 days to get to the customers and a lot of the customers they're used to things like Amazon where it's the next day shipping and you really can't compete on terms of something like Amazon you're gonna get a lot of bad reviews you're gonna get a lot of people complaining uh, and you're most likely gonna get your PayPal your stripe account they're gonna be banned because of this poor customer service the other thing that I mentioned within the fact that it's not sustainable the product quality isn't great. So as you already know, what I was selling, it was a shoe. I mean, two shoes. <laughs> I was selling a pair of shoes and the product, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't amazing. It wasn't something that you would go out and you would find like in a Nike store or something like that. The shoe soles were made of plastic. You could tell that it was just not great in its craftsmanship. The next thing is that it's also poor customer service. So if you're having your shoes or your, any product arriving like super late, people are complaining about the shipping time and you can't really do refunds, especially with things like clothing. That was one of the big things I wish that I would have done differently, not necessarily go into the apparel niche because with clothing, a lot of times, and I didn't realize this until I was actually in that niche, is that people order several shoes. They try on several shoes because it's online shopping and then they want to return them. And when I was starting off, I didn't really have those margins uh, so that people could return the shoes. So instead, what ended up happening was that people were stuck with like five pairs of shoes that they bought because they didn't know exactly what was their size. And then I couldn't spend the money in order to bring them back. So what I had to end up doing was saying that they had to keep their shoes or if they did want them to be returned, then we could have them returned to us at their expense and we would only be able to pay them back 50% uh, of what they purchased so that we would kind of at least just break even. The next thing is that it's not scalable. And again, I don't want this to be kind of like miss misinterpreted with the fact that dropshipping isn't scalable. The concept of dropshipping is scalable, but in terms of taking an advertisement from the YouTube or from the AliExpress website, cutting up all those clips and then putting them on Facebook. Facebook, first off, is very good at reading what's an actual good advertisement and what's just like a poorly done together AliExpress or a ripped off YouTube ad. If you're not having your own custom content made, uh, whether it's actually professionally shot or whether it's user generated shots or it's customer reviews, then you're not going to be able to scale the creative and especially with the creative especially when you're scaling and i want to make a completely separate video about running facebook advertisements especially when you're scaling uh, it's very very important to be testing out all types of different creatives and typically when people start off they only test a few creatives they only test like probably uh one two three like tops maybe four creatives and then people see this creative often and oftentimes it's somebody else who has tried to drop ship the same product and then the creative just gets saturated and then it just dies out and also if you have the same creative uh you, also the cost per click the cost per impressions in drop shipping they just get very very expensive and even now alone, uh, or I should say running Facebook ads is already getting fairly expensive. So if you want to put that w combined with uh, really poorly done commercials, it's going to be like through the roof and you're really just going to be able to like break even if it goes well. And the last reason, the third reason, everybody wants to shut you down when you're drop shipping. And what I mean by this, two main issues that I had was with PayPal slash Stripe, so the payment methods and Facebook. Let's start with the payment methods. If you're getting a lot of refunds because of the two last reasons, because of the poor customer service, well, mainly the poor customer service, PayPal is going to notice that and it's going to put your money on hold. I would had thousands of dollars being put on hold because people were asking for refunds and it just seemed, first off, really suspicious. If you have a PayPal account that's making like zero dollars at the start, all of a sudden it makes like a bunch of money and then all of a sudden you're getting all of these returns. So either your money is going to get put on hold or your PayPal account is just gonna get shut down as a whole. And PayPal, it was like one of the worst uh, payment processors that I've ever used. So it, it was also times when I'd need cash flow coming in and it was just simply, I wasn't able to get the cash flow because again, I would have thousands of dollars just being put on, uh, on these PayPal holds. So 
The other big thing was with Facebook account bans. Even now, Facebook is very, very sensitive in terms of accounts that it bans. If you don't have your business registered, if you don't have your domain registered, um, if you don't have like the, the proper tax forms that are in Facebook ads, Facebook looks for basically anything it can to shut your account down. And I mean that in the sense if you're not like this massive, huge business. And the other way that I kind of, I was struggling with this was that I was getting Facebook account ban after Facebook account ban after Facebook account ban. And it got to a point where it was just getting ridiculous because I had employees and then I would have to like stop working because there was just nothing to work on because I would have these accounts banned. They wouldn't be able to use uh, media buying because there was nothing to media buy. Once one account is affected, it affects all of the other accounts. So the route that I had to go down with this was that I had to actually purchase a, an agency ad account. And agency ad accounts, for you guys who don't know what those are, agency ad accounts are basically ad accounts given to large agencies. So let's say if you have like Nike and Coca-Cola and they wanna run Facebook ads. It's a lot more difficult and Facebook really wouldn't wanna shut down an account like Nike or Coca-Cola because they just spend so much money with advertising for them that it's very difficult to get them to shut down. But if you have an agency account, it's a lot of more smaller accounts, agencies, marketing agencies, uh, used to buy so that they can run all of these accounts without having any problems. But the thing with that was that on minimum, I was spending anywhere between like 600 to a thousand dollars USD, I might add, as a Canadian per month just to keep these accounts going. Though I was making a good amount, it was like something that was cutting into my margins that I really didn't want to be cutting into my margins. Even if an account went down with the agency accounts, they replaced the accounts, but it's just, it's so time consuming and it's just uh, another huge burden that uh, Facebook keeps wanting to shut down the accounts. So I don't wanna give you all these problems without giving you any solutions to each one of them. And it kind of just seems a little bit extreme if I tell you uh, to, don't do, to not do drop shipping, because yes, you can still do drop shipping, but the barrier to entry is a whole lot larger than it used to be before. Uh, maybe before it was something like you could just put an ad together and then you could just run it on Facebook, test it and if it didn't work, uh, move on to the next one and then scale to the moon. You can still do it, but I think you need a lot more money and I think you definitely need a full-time job unless you 100% know what you're doing. So I wanted to share the screen with one of the uh, companies, with one of the, what was one of the biggest dropshipping companies before, which is called uh, Seconds. And one of the main things that shut this company now, down, just before I give you kind of the solution to all this, is that as you can see here, um, it just had a bunch of poor customer reviews. Was sent a child's green tank top instead of a salmon, uh, instead of a salon chair. Uh, it was four months ago. They're refusing to refund. Fraud, fraud, fraud. Uh, don't give them any of their money. But that's what I mean. Like maybe they started off like pretty early in the game, but at this point, it's just not sustainable to do that kind of stuff. So onto the solutions parts for the not sustainable shipping times is that if you're gonna do uh, long shipping times, I suggest that you contact the suppliers directly. Uh, I personally had a bunch of contacts with suppliers just because I was in like drop shipping forums and I was like really figuring this out from like Reddit forums and, and Discord forums. And there's a lot of people, people that were sharing their suppliers uh, information. So I suggest that you get on a Discord call or uh, speak directly with the supplier. Another way is that if you're already doing pretty well, then you actually bring the product and have the product in store or uh, locally so that you can ship it out quicker. Uh, and in terms of poor customer service, I guess this kind of payback rides on the previous things is that uh, shipping time and then the product quality has to be a lot great, a lot better. Uh, not scalable. What I did myself as well, being on these Discord forums and being on all of these chats is that I actually asked people if they had like professional people that could do commercials, that, that could run commercials. And I got really professionally done commercials that cost me like around $600. And then I had user generated content, which cost me significantly less. And the user generated content always did significantly better than the very amazing uh, commercial. Always refresh the creative and first off, just go with user generated content first. And then lastly, everyone wants to shut you down. Well, this is kind of just a thing that you have to deal with. Definitely go for the agency accounts. I would highly recommend. And the last thing is uh, <laughs> with the, the payment methods, go with Stripe. Stop using PayPal. PayPal is like insanely bad. Um, that's basically the whole reason of why I quit dropshipping after making 40K uh, per month. And 
I would most likely go back to it to be totally honest with you because I do think that you can sell out as in like sell out your store in the long run uh, for pretty good amounts but I wouldn't go back to doing it the same way that I had originally done it. Instead, right now what I'm doing is that I'm focusing on my marketing agency, uh, helping people run their Facebook advertisements, Google advertisements, short video marketing. With that money, eventually it's gonna go into uh, selling online products again, but they're gonna be at a much higher markup and they're actually gonna be a much higher quality. Uh, with that said, let me know if you have any questions. Ask me on the questions below and uh, yeah, love making videos for you guys. Cheers. Wait.